Welcome back to the next episode guys. So in the previous episode we created the folder structure, we created a master page, a default page and a style sheet. So the first thing we're going to want to look at first is the background. So in the actual Photoshop design you'll notice the whole page has a wooden floor effect. Uh, so we're going to need to actually slice out a portion of that and add it to the background of our website. So the first thing we're going to actually do, if we just zoom in slightly, so as you can see we've got the wood effect here, uh, but we've got to be careful, we've got to make sure that the, the wood effect repeats um, nicely so it doesn't look like it's a, a single image. So what we're going to do, we're going to hide this main area for now with the, the logo and the navigation so we can just see the background wooden effect. Uh, so make sure you, you've selected the option at the top here and then you'll notice you've got an option here that says auto select make sure there's a tick in the box and the drop down box has layer selected now all you need to do is just basically click on the particular element so if we click on this your website here you notice it jumps to that layer here so we just want to turn that off and we basically just got to go through all the design just to turn it all off for now so what I'll do I'll pause the video while I just uncheck all of these, like I said, just click on every single element that you want to hide and you'll notice it jumps straight to it and then just in click on the, the eye symbol and that make it disappear. Okay, so I've now hidden all of those elements. Uh, now you can see, we can actually see the whole background. So what we want to do is create, just slice out a portion of that background and then we're going to repeat it um, on our background on the website. So we're going to come over here on the left hand side to the slice tool. Um, it'll probably be on crop tool to start with this icon here so if you just click and hold and select slice tool and then you now get this sort of knife uh, and we're going to click at the top we're going to click and drag try and make sure you get it right in between the those two boards where I've got it there and then come across and then we're going to stop just before these other two boards here and if we let go you can now see that's created a slice now if we double click on the inside and we get this uh, box pop up here and this is the where we can give this slice a name so we're going to call this BG and then we're going to click on OK if we just zoom in slightly again that's control and the plus key to zoom also as well if you hold down the space bar you'll notice my cursor turns into a hand and if I left click and drag I can now move around the window Okay, now you want to come down to this little um, sort of square here. And then if we put our mouse over the square, you now see it turns into two arrows and we can now extend it. So we're going to bring it down just to here. So it's just below this line here. Okay, so if we just zoom out, so again that's control and the minus key. Okay, so now we've got our slice, what we need to do is go to file save for web and devices and then you get this preview window here if we just do again control minus that will zoom out so we can see the whole design and as you can see here it's highlighted the slice we created um, and if you look down here as well it tells you what the file type is going to be saved as so it says jpeg and it also tells you how big the file size is going to be so that's 179.7k now if we look up at the top right hand corner, we've got a drop down, we can select a different format, so GIF, JPEG and PNG. So if we leave it on JPEG, you've got a quality slider here. So if we click on this and we can then adjust the quality, so we can bring it down slightly, so say 5% down. And now if we look at the size, it's now come down to 151, so we want to try and keep our image sizes as low as possible without the image degrading. So if we just zoom in. We could probably bring it down a little more. So that's 85% That's eighty-five for the quality and it's now come down to 108k. I think if we bring it to 80, and that's at 89.95k, so I'm happy enough with that. Uh, and then we're going to click on save. So it's now asking us where do we want to save that file. Uh, so I want to save it in the images folder. So it's now asking us where do we want to save it. We want to save it in the images folder, but we're not actually going to actually select the images folder. Um, I'll show you what I mean in a second. So ignore the file name for now. All you have to make sure is that the slices option is set to selected slices. So it's only going to save the selected slice, the slice we created. 
Um, so if we click save, this will save it into the images folder. So click save. So just to explain why I didn't actually select the images folder to save the file, uh, if I actually do that then, so if I double click on images, um, and if I now click save, it's now saved it, but it's now created a folder inside of images called images. So if I just bring up uh, my file structure, Okay, so here's the file, the folder structure we created. So here's our images folder, our style, our JS, and so on. So if I now go into my images folder, you will now see that there's another folder in there called images. Um, so that's why I didn't select the uh, images folder the first time around. And there we go, so we've done that portion. Now that we're back in Visual Web Developer, what we want to do, if we click on the master page, if it's not open, just come over to your solution explorer over here and double click on master page. So we want to add in a line of code, so it's going to be link rel style sheet. And then we're going to tell it where that style sheet is with href. So it's going to be in the style folder, if I could spell style. Uh, and it's going to be style.css. And then we're going to close that off. Okay, so we've now added the link to the style sheet. Now in the style sheet itself, we want to add some code as well. So we're gonna put a star, which means everything. So every element, we're gonna say it has margin of zero pixels and padding, again, of zero pixels. So we're gonna use this body element as it's there for us. So we're gonna type in the following. So background dash image. So we're going to point it to a URL, so we're going to put it in two brackets. So we're going to put dot dot forward slash images forward slash bg dot jpeg. And then we're going to close that off. So we're telling this element here to look for an image, so a background image in this following location. So the dot dot forward slash means to go back one folder. So if we look um, where the style sheet is, it's actually in the style folder here. But for the style sheet to be able to get to that image, it has to go back one folder, and then it goes into the images folder, and then it finds the bg.jpg. Okay, so if we save that, if we go back to our master page, if we click on design view, so as you can see now, the background image is now repeating all the way to the to the right across the website. Um, by default, background images uh, will always repeat um, unless you tell it not to. So for example, if I came into here and said background repeat, uh, no repeat, it will just show the, the image. As you can see here, now we've got this white space over here and it's just showing us the, the image. So like I said, we can take this off or if we wanted to, we could just say repeat and go back to the master page and as you can see it's now repeating. Okay so I'm going to leave it there again for this episode and I'll create a few more and again I'll upload those uh, in a couple of days. So as usual thanks for watching, uh, please leave any comments, please subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.